Okay, so we're starting uh, Perik Zayn. Okay, we discussed it last year very, very briefly. And uh, we're going to dive into something that's probably one of, if you ask me, one of the most beautiful teachings of Shlomo Amelech. Everybody knows this pasuk. Tov shem mi shem en tov ve yom amavet ve yom ivalelot. A good name is better than a good oil. And the day of death from the day of birth. So, the, the simple understanding, the mundane understanding, the pshat, the pshat, right? It's the sforno, the, the pshat of simple is what? That you're better off working on, your, on having a good name, even if that means to not be wealthy or not be financially successful and have, have what you need, but focus on the t- good name. Better than what? Misham and Tov. Better than a good oil. Then to be known as someone that the Shemen here that we're talking about, the simple Shemen that we're talking about, before we dive into the depth of the, of the, of the meaning of the Pasuk, is the, the oil people used to own themselves with, like that with good o- uh, order. Right? So your name goes further than the, than the distance of the smell of a good, of a good perfume. That's basically what he's saying, right? Ve'yom amavet, and you learn more, and you grow more to, uh, towards Hashem and towards your own uh, revelation and your own potential when you, when you face, when you think of the day of death, then when you, when you think of the day of birth. That's a simple understanding. The Ibn Ezra, the Ibn Ezra wants to say something a little bit similar, but he tweaks it a little bit. He says, a person has more to gain, has much more to gain when his name is out then when his wealth and his power is out, meaning you, you, you accomplish much more when people respect you for who you are than for what you have. Can you repeat that one more time, please? People respect you much more for what you are than for what you have. Although it's true that today we might think it's the opposite, right? You, you have money, you're respected. You don't have money, you're a nobody, right? But the reality is, the, rea- the true, true reality is, is that when you're a good man, the, the, the respect that comes from, from, you know, towards a good man is, is something that's deep. When you respect money, it's something that's selfish. You respect it because you want to get close to it, because you want it, because you want to benefit from it, you want to be socially connected to it. Right? When you respect money, you don't respect the guy. You couldn't care less. And, and, and the reality is, is that, you know, you see people, they lose everything. And that's it. No, nobody mentions, mentions their name anymore. They completely disappear. So that's, that, that's the first thing. The Yama Mavet, and how do you accomplish that? When you realize that there is... That death is around the corner. You never know when it comes, right? Yom HaMavet, the day of death. When is the day of death? Nobody knows, right? Nobody knows when the day of death is. So you have to think as if today is my last day. Instead of thinking of what? Oh, I was born and I have life in front of me, right? Okay. That's the second Pirush. Which is very similar than the first, but with a little bit of, of, of differences. And then there is a third pirush, which is the pirush of the Zohar Kadosh. The Zohar Kadosh in Parashat Yitro, if you want to see it, is Daf Pechet Amud Aleph, page eighty-eight. Says Rabbi Shimon. He says. The following. 
It, it goes on, on the, the pirush of the, of, the, of the dibra, of the commandment, but he said, Shem Hashem la elokecha You will not say the name of God in vain. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says, Rabbi Shimon said, what does that mean? It means the following. And listen, because it's very, this, this is the fundamental of the brachot. Okay? Of all beracha. He says, let me, let's refer to the story of Elisha Navi. We know that Elisha Navi goes and visits the wife of Ovadia Navi, who passed away. And, uh, he tell, and she complains to him. She says, you know, what can I do? You know, the, the husband is, is gone. The kids were taken away. I have nothing left. So Elisha tells her, do, you don't have anything at home that I can, that I can use as a vessel for my bracha to materialize itself and become a physical bracha for you, a physical abundance. So she tells him, all I have is a, is a, a, a jar of, uh, of oil, a jug of oil. So he says, bring it and go get from all your neighbors vessels and start pouring from that bucket, from that jug, Oil in all in every in every bucket that you can find in every uh, uh, pot or whatever that you will bring, you're going to pour from that jug. And that's what happened. He said, "Close the doors from the house. Don't let anybody in." Okay. After she gathered all those uh, vessels, all those pots and everything, and he's like, "Okay, now start pouring." And she filled every single bucket that she, 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 she brought into that house. And that was for her a very big blessing of Panasa because now she had beautiful oil, right? She had good oil. So says, says Rabbi Shimon Baruchai, he says the following. Tov Shem is referring to the name of Hashem. The praise of the name of Hashem. Tov Shem, Hashem is good. And you know, when you praise Hashem, you can praise Him from a place of miracle. You can praise Him from a place of fear, from a place of distress. Okay? Usually people, they, they converge towards Hashem, towards the religion when things are bad. When everything's okay, I don't need to pray, right? When do I pray? When, uh, <laughs> when there's problems. So they, they can praise Hashem or formulate the praise of Hashem out of despair. And all of them are Tov Shem. Hashem is good. But if you really look at the, 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 the way the word Tov is written, Shlomo HaMelech left hinted messages in Shir Hashirim with a big shin, in Kohelet, in this perek with a big tet, he didn't write a regular tet, in Mishle with a big mem, in order to teach us something. There is Tov, Hashem is good, but then there's a big Tov, there's a big tet, Hashem is good. Hashem is amazing. So says Rabbi Shimon Baruchai, you know when Hashem is amazing, you know when you're in awe, when you love Him so much, when He's so spectacular. Mikoach Shem From the result, not related to, from the result of a good Shemen. What does that mean? Until now, until now, until the Zohar, so we had a comparison, right? We're comparing a good name to a good oil. The truth is that you cannot compare. It's a disgrace to even compare. Can you compare the, 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 can you compare men and his actions to anything that's physical? It's like I tell you, you know what, Adam, you're better off, you're better off being polite when you're polite, you're better than a Ferrari. 
Mm. What does one have to do with anything? You understand? It's a, it's, it's, the comparison is problematic. It's problematic. Therefore, therefore, the Chachamim find ways to say that we don't really mean the shemen that you eat. We need the, the smell and the, where, how far the smell goes, so the action goes further. Comes to Zohar and says something else completely different. He says, what is shemen? Shemen is what you use to light fire, to light a candle. It is what gives life to the candle. Says the Zohar Kadosh, what is the candle? The neshamot of Am Yisrael. The neshama is represented by a candle. You know when Tov Shem, you know when you praise Hashem and you see how Hashem is good, how good He is to me, how amazing He is to me. When your Shemen is Tov, when your Neshama is Tov, when you, you're able to use your Neshama for good, when your actions are good, when you behave good, when you're aligned with your soul, with your Shemen, with your potential, then you see the Shem Tov. Then you see how HaKadosh Baruch Hu can be so graceful, so merciful, so loving, so abundant. That's beautiful. This is what the Zohar comes and teaches us. And he says, he says from this we see, but also it's very important. I don't know by you, but this is a minhag that we have for generation in, uh, I saw my grandfather do it. Uh, so comes the Zohar and said, from here we learn something very important. You should never make a bracha on the table without food on it. Always have food on your table when you make beracha. You make birkat amazon, make sure there is still food. Lechatchila, the best, says the Zohar, at least have one full bread, a loaf of bread that was not touched. And says the Zohar, you're better off refraining yourself from eating and leaving a little bit of food than eating it. Because when the Akadosh Baruch Hu cannot bring Beracha on something that it does not have substance. A table that doesn't have food is a table with, it's, it's, it's a piece of wood without substance. The purpose of a table is to have food on it. You have food on it, comes the Beracha. Can you give us another example? Well, that's, that's something that's extremely important. Again, make sure that when you do, you want Beracha of Birkat Amazon, you want the blessing on your food, you want the blessing of Parnasa. When you do Birkat Amazon, make sure to have always a loaf of bread on the table while you make the Beracha. Comes and he says something else. He says, and make sure not to have some emptiness. Emptiness should not be on your table. What does that mean? And this is how it was translated in the Minhag by us, at least, you know, in my family. I don't know if you ever, if, if you were ever at my table, you will see that when a bottle, a, a bottle that is open is finished, I always put it horizontal. I never leave it uh, vertical. Okay. Why? Ah, oh, yes, exactly, Chazak. Because when it's vertical, the bottle is a vessel and the vessel is empty. When you lean on the table, that's it. It's not, not a, it's, it's not a bottle anymore. And this is also a siman beracha. A siman beracha. Or, what you do, you just don't finish the bottle. You live a little bit and you don't finish it. The Zohar explains that if you want to be... Shlomo Melech tells us that Tov is relative. What's good for you might not be good for me. I want better. And what's great for me might not be great for you. You want much, much better. But the ultimate tov, the ultimate tov only comes, only comes. It's a result of shemen tov, of good actions, of good productive life. 
of a life that's filled with, with substance. But not just substance. Substance that is like the, like the shemen, like the oil that brings life, that brings clarity, that brings a good odor, a good smell, something you, you can, something that irrigates and, and not irrigate, but uh, hydrates your skin, that makes your skin beautiful. The oil has so much, so much positivity to it. You drink the olive oil, it's good for your brain, it brings you, you know, clarity. So people that want to feel Hashem, don't force the feeling. Hashem, I want to feel you. Hashem, I need to feel you. You want the Ahavta, it's Hashem. He bless us with love. He bless us out with love. You want to love him? Don't force the love. Be a man. Be that oil. It's a fantastic pshat. And the only way you can do it, the only way you can do it, the the only way you're super productive is when you understand that this life is a life that brings death. It's not a life that stays forever. It's something that just stops. At one point it stops. So sudden, right? You, you don't prepare for it. You don't want it. You want to face it. You want to think about it. But you know what? You don't have a choice. It's, an, it's, 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 a, it's a fact that is dropped without you being able to control anything. Asma. So what? So there's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. If a person knows that in 30 days, no, I know that's it, he's going to be gone. The guy's not going to sleep. He's, when he's to sleep, he's going to stay 24 hours and he's going to drink Red, red Bulls or whatever it is to make sure that he can do as much as he can. This is what Shlomo Amenech comes and tells us. It changes completely, at least based on the Zohar, the perspective of the relationship with Hashem. The Tov Hashem, the good of Hashem, is a result, is a direct result from my good actions. The, it, it, it changes completely this Pasuk. Mm-hmm. Completely, completely. Rob, can I ask you a related but slightly unrelated question to this? Yeah. So, when educating our children, um, you want them to understand the wisdom that you have, right? But also you understand that your children obviously can't have the wisdom that you have because you just have more years and more experience. In my experience, I went through, let's call it a system, my path, went to Flapa Shishiva, I graduated, and uh, thank God I had had an amazing uh, set of parents that never forced religion on me, but just said, here's how we do things, and it's up to you to choose or not. It's wisdom like this, right, that is so relatable, is so deep and meaningful that could really just change the entire direction. That one pasuk, if you just learn that one pasuk and really internalize it, it could change your entire life and could probably get you on the right derech with the entire religion and your entire system. Correct. The one pasuk. Yes. But at least from my experience with going through yeshiva, Sometimes it's very systematic, it's very robotic, it's very, this is just what we do as a matter of fact, and this is the, these are the practices that we do because this is what's written and so and so. How do you convey the, these, this essence to your children, right, while still understanding that, that whatever age they might be, they're probably not ready for that pasuk specifically? Very good. So that your question, Hashem answers it through what we call Yerida Tadorot. The generations are going down. Chachamim tell us 
if the Rishonim were, were men, then we are monkeys. And, it, and, and the, the next generation, if they, if they say they're monkeys, we're, <laughs> we're ants, we're nobodies, okay? So there is, and yet, and yet, we have a concentration of the Torah. Uh, I don't know if you listened to the shiur yesterday, but the world is created with the Aleph. Well, the first letter is the letter Yud of HaKadosh Baruch but the, 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 the beginning is with the Aleph. The Aleph creates the word Anochi. The word Anochi creates the first Dibur. Anochi Hashem Elokecha Hashem Rotzeticha Me'eret Mitzrayim. I am Hashem your God that take you out of Egypt. The first commandment. The first commandment and, and Rav, you know, opens up into the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments opens up into 613 mitzvot, right? And then 613 mitzvot open up into what? Into Mishnah, into Gemara, into uh, uh, Shulchan Aruch, into Mishnah Berura, Kafa Hayim, Yalkut Yosef, and we keep on going, on going, on going, on going, on going. Now, the reason there's so many books, the reason there's so many explanations, the reason there's so many commentators, is just because we're so far from the actual essence and the origin. So we need a lot, a lot, a lot of explanation in this, in this side, from that side, from that angle, from that angle again. And they're like, well, 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 he's saying this and the other guy is saying that. They're contradicting themselves. How is that possible? If it's Emmet, because it's talking to different people. And we don't stop to that knowledge. That knowledge is just an, ex an extra uh, brick, okay? Or uh, there's a level in the ladder for you to be able to get to the top. Education is the same thing. Education is the same thing. There are, you have the, the, the top is the role model. The role model. Whether it, for, your, for a, a child, for a son, it's always his father. And if his father as for role model is his father. So the grandson sees the grandfather as his role model. If the father has a rabbi as a role model, so the, the son will see the rabbi as a role model. Okay? So the father dictates based on what's important to him, what will be important to the child. That is, if you will, the, the influence by actions. Right, lead by by uh, example. Lead by example, and th that's one element, and that has nothing to do really with your son, right? It's, you do you do it because you this is what you believe in. It's just that happens to be that your family is exposed to it, so they see it, so okay, they accept it and they look up to it because this is what's important to you. Then there is the communication. I mean. Then there is the communication between, between father and son. That communication is what? Is taking your action, diluting it to a level of understanding of the child and feeding him this information with a spoon. So you might teach your son the exact same thing over time with different words and different angles, but at the end, it's the same. By, when it's referring to you, it's the same thing. That's what you've been living with for the past 20 years. But you used different formulas in order to, to pass on the message. This is what we learned from Yeridat Adorot, from the fact that we went from being Adam Arishon, Moshe Rabbeinu, the most knowledgeable, to a generation that barely can read, okay? And yet, in the generation that can barely can read, you have more books and more knowledge than ever before. It's not that there, was, there is more knowledge. It's just that there is more explanation for you to re relate to the knowledge that was so obvious to the generations previous, previously. The problem is, the problem is, is that Two things. Number one, we don't value ourselves enough to behave a certain way and to conduct ourselves with high expectations of ourselves in terms of what we are allowed to say, 
what we're not allowed to say, our actions, our philosophy, the way we walk at home. The Gemara says that the lady had seven boys. All of them were Kohenim Gedolim. They all became Kohen Gadol. So the Chachamim came to her and they told her, what, what's your merit? What did you do? She said, the walls of my house never saw one hair that's on my head. What is that? So the halacha is, if you're at home and nobody's looking at you, you don't have, a woman doesn't have to cover her hair. But a tzaddika, a woman that covers her hair, not because there's people and they're looking at me, but because she understands that that's what needs to be done. And you know what? If a man can look at me, but I don't want Hashem to look at me in, in, in a public way. I don't want the mezuzah to look at me. I don't want the books to be able to look at me. It's a different relationship. So she, she, I don't want my kids to look at me this way. I don't want them to see me like that and think that it's normal to look at a woman with her hair uncovered. She respected Hashem. Hashem respected her kids and made each and every one of them a Kohen Gadol. The leader, his leader, okay, or the, the, his representative, his ambassador as a leader of Am Yisrael, as a, from, from, from the Bet HaMikdash. On the other end, if you don't respect yourself, even if on, in the... Even if you are, you pretend, okay? You can pretend, but the emet is picked up. I'm gonna tell you a story of somebody that came to me when I was in Israel. The son of a very, very prominent rabbi. Very prominent rabbi, okay? Very well known. And the son, uh, he didn't follow the path of his father. Okay, he, he, he let go. Eh? And uh, I was asked to try to get close to him and, and give him a little bit of chizuk. So, during my first conversation, me, meeting with him, we, we, we connected, we spoke. And I asked him, I said, listen, what happened? You grew up in the most religious home. Your father is a huge rabbi. He wrote books. Everybody's respecting him. He's walking on the street, people kiss his hand. I mean, you know, he's high up there. What's going on? He told me the following. He said, when he, his father became chief rabbi of a certain city, okay, as part of the package of a big rabbi, of a chief rabbi, you know, you become, you become uh, you, like you work for the government now, you know? So he was, you know, the part of being a rabbi, they give you a car, they give you a driver, uh, you know, they, they, they set you up, they set you up. So he was given, he was given a Volvo, a white Volvo. And uh, maybe after a week or two that, uh, that uh, the, the, you know, the father, the father got the car he drops off his son to yeshiva and the son opens the door and and when he opens the door he hits you know the the fence the metal fence that's on the the the, the sidewalk and it uh, it made a little bit you know it, it I don't know, took off some some uh, some uh, some paint or whatever and the father went nuts went out looked at the car what did you do what did you do what, what is this you can't ta -ta 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 -ta. The father, was, the son was in shock, in shock. And he said, I don't understand. My father keeps on talking about how physicality is nothing and don't, 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 don't have it and it's not good. It's it's and blah, 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 blah. And yet when it comes to his car, he's going much known because there's a little crack over, there's a little dent on the door. That moment created a, it, 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 it just shifted his head and he started questioning his father questioning everything and then he realized like this is not for me there's too many too much lie there's too much it's 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 a, it's, it's a show it's a show i don't want to be part of that what do you see from this you see that even if you try to pretend 
Your kids, they pick up. The people that care, that look up to you, pick up on things. So it has to be genuine. It has to be genuine. That's the impact of our actions. So when we come back to talk about the education of kids, there is more important than, than what you, uh, you want to teach is what you, how you want to live your life. And only then, if this is, you know, you know how many times I've been in, uh, in phone calls, never in my life, the word that starts with an F came out of my mouth. Not once. Not once. I can't even bear listening to it. And when I started going to those meetings that are business meetings, it's just like every two words. Every two words. And then, and then the guy's going to say, gonna say, sorry, Rob. So, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> really sorry. Yes, if, if you should be sorry that I heard it, but I'm sorry for you that you, it's like so... You understand what I'm saying? It's, the, 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 the way you eat, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you behave at the table, the way you behave in your own bedroom. In your own bedroom. How do you walk in your home? is what will dictate, okay, the norm in your family. So before you focus on what you want to teach, focus on what you feel comfortable being or who you really want to be. Follow-up question. Yes. In Shema, we say that we have to teach our, our banim, right? And that's, that's, that's what Hashem commands us to do. When it says that, that mitzvah of, uh, of, of teaching your kids in the Shema, is that by actions? Is that accomplished by actions? Or does it need to be, because it says, v'dibartaba, meaning it, it actually also says, with, does it no, to be with words, or could it be by actions? V'dibartaba, okay, you will speak what? You will speak the Torah. Right? And right. then right after that, right? right? So do you have the dibur, you have the teaching, and then you have the action. So it's saying you need both. 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 Got it. Got it. Thank you. So, so, Tov, Tov, everybody wants the Tov. Vayar Hashem ki Tov. Hashem saw that the creation was good, right? On Tuesday, it says twice the, shem, the name Tov, the word Tov. Tov, Tov, is Hashem will in creation. The way Hashem wants it. Okay? So where, if you want the name of Hashem, to be revealed the way He wants to reveal Himself, make sure your Tov is also revealed. Your Shem and Tov is revealed. Do not expect anything else in return. Amazing. That's Rabbi he, Shimon, right? Yes, that's Rabbi Shimon in the Zohar. And then he, he jumps and says, Tov la et bet evel mi et bet ishte. And you're better off. If you want to become a Shemen Tov, right? Basically, it's an, extra, it's, an, it's an extraction from the end of the, of the first Pasuk. Go, go visit the morning homes, instead of going and partying. Even though party is great, you feel good, you laugh, yeah. but it, it, the, 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 the structure, the, 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 the identity, the essence of a bet mishte, of a party, is to live the moment, right? What's a party? 
you're going to enjoy. So it's the, the Bet Mishte, the Simcha, the partying, is for you to stop everything and focus on the moment and the, hap the, the, the happiness that you can get at that moment, which is great. The, what he says is bad. But Bet Avel is better. Because you don't take, you don't focus on the moment, you reflect on life. The panoramic view. Always have the panoramic view. Yes, you can zoom out, you can zoom in, depending on each situation. But you gain more from, an, uh, from again, from a view, a large view of what life is about, than just zooming in a moment of happiness that you know in a few hours will be over anyway. And that's what everybody can relate to. When you go to a, 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 the house of a, morning, a, a mourner, everybody knows that at some point, you know, they, people are going to be sitting talking about him. But when you go to Bet Amishte, when you go to party, it's not, it's not sure that you're going to have that party. It's not sure that you're gonna be able to have the same enjoyment. It's not sure that something, another moment like this bichlal is going to happen. So your interaction with it is vulnerable. You understand? It's, it's so moment, it's, it's so out of your control that to, to have such a moment of happiness that you like that you enjoy it, hoping that something like this again is going to happen, but knowing that it might never happen again, or it might not be the same simcha. So there's a lot of mixed feelings that are tying the person up with that moment. Where, when you go to a mourner's home, you can understand this, what's going on, and reflect to it. On very deep levels, you can take this, this moment with you and let him help you and let him open your eyes to the, to the truth. Something you cannot do with Beta Mishte, with a, with a party. It's very deep what Shlomo Amelech is saying here. Do you understand? Tom. Beautiful. Thank you, Raf. Besimcha. Thank you, Rav. All right. Be'at slacha, be'sorot tovot. Amen. Love you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. you understood the last chidush, yeah? Yes. Very incredible. much so. Amazing. Very okay. much so. Thank so, you, Rav. Besimcha. Have a great day. You too.